Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sunni at International Christian University. So in the previous video, we created uh, three tiers uh, that, is, uh, that are associated with uh, this sound file. And now we have them, uh, we have the last tier language tier annotated. So in the word tier, now we see that there are actually uh, several words. Let's try to listen. The way to listen is you can just click uh, the duration bar. Uh, bead, bid, bade, bed, bad, booed, book, boat, bought, body, bud. Yes, so you have many words and we do not want to just write all of the words uh, in this word here, right? It would be useful to make some kind of uh, division. Uh, so let's uh, try to uh, select the first two words. And now you don't have to try, <laughs> you can do it, right? We selected it because it's kind of, uh, um, there are too many things on this panel. I'm gonna do zoom to selection using zooms uh, SEL. And when I click it, it will go zoom to selection. So now we have two words and I want to play the visible part now. Bead, bid. So we have a bead and bid, right? So how can I mark it? One way is just write it like this, bead and bid. But then it doesn't align well. It's like kind of strange looking. So I want to mark uh, uh, the places where we see the bead and bid and then actually uh, uh, write the words there. So uh, let's select a point uh, before uh, bead. And once I click it, now if you look at the tiers, maybe you didn't notice it before, but if you click at the tiers, they, uh, there's a gray bar or gray line that appears. And when the gray line um, meets the top line of each tier, just underneath it, there are circles. There are circles that are created. So these circles, when you click them, they became blue solid line or red solid line. And let me also do the same thing with the word uh, uh, after, with the uh, part after the word bead and so you see the three circles and I click the circle and it becomes solid. And I will do the same thing. Uh, let me, uh, I will do the same thing with the uh, bid. I click it and I do. So these lines are called boundary now in a word. Uh, they are called boundaries. And uh, these boundaries can be moved uh, freely. So let's say I can just click and drag right? like this. So you can move this boundary once you create it. You don't need to create them multiple times if you need, if you know uh, uh, the number of the boundaries. What you notice probably is when I select a particular area interval, uh, the left boundary becomes red and that means active and highlight. And the right boundary remains blue. And let's, uh, let me click the area for B. Again, the left boundary becomes active and the right boundary becomes blue. So now we can write B here. And we know what we write here will be on the upper left hand side and for bid, right? This is a bid, uh, uh, that's what we wrote. Let's uh, uh, do an interesting experiment. Let's create a boundary that, an extra boundary, just uh, for the sake of creating one. I created one. And what you can see is whenever you create a boundary, whatever was in that interval, whatever was in that interval will go to the left of that newly created boundary. So I create a boundary and it goes to the left. Of course, this is 
empty. But in reality, we didn't want to have this extra boundary. So how to get rid of it? If you go to the top, uh, remember we saw spectrum pitch intensity format before. Now there are some extra menus uh, that appeared and one of them is boundary. So now if you click boundary, there are multiple choices, but the choice uh, selection that we are interested in now is remove. So if you click the remove, uh, option, then the boundary that's being highlighted will be removed. That means in the currently selected area, the left, the red lighted highlighted a boundary will be removed. Let's look at it. And yes, that's what happened. So now um, we know how to create boundaries, right? You select either waveform, somewhere in the waveform or the spectrogram. Either way is fine. Then you will see a grain line uh, being generated and then you will see a circle. And basically you click the circle that meet, uh, uh, that are in the tier where you wanna create a boundary and then you can create a boundary. And you can also remove these boundaries if they're uh, created by mistake by going to boundary and remove and typing the language or the words that you are interested in, in the boundary, inside the boundary is all basically the same. In the last video, what we didn't talk about is uh, basically uh, the point tier. And remember stress was a point tier. And let's say I wanna say, oh, this is the stress part, or this is the high part of uh, this uh, blue line. I will use the pitch uh, which is represented with a blue line in order to mark the stress. So let's try to roughly find the highest point. And I found the highest point. And again, we see the gray lines. Now I will click the circle uh, in the first on the first tier. And when I click it, now the boundary looks different, right? Uh, there was solid in the second tier, but uh, it's kind of empty in the first tier. And here, actually, I can write something. So for example, I can write height, H of height, or I can delete it, or that stress, or something like that. So uh, what you can see in this particular case is now there's a difference between interval tier and boundary, uh, point tier. If you have a point tier, uh, wherever you make to create a boundary, uh, you can annotate that particular boundary when you have an interval tier, uh, you create two boundaries and inside those two boundaries will be annotated. That's it for this video.